This is Dr. Diane Gay Hart. And in this video, I want to talk to you about using the concepts of the Myers-Briggs to help you in your relationship with your partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Um, because oftentimes, um, wherever you are opposite of your partner is where you're going to have the most conflict. And it often becomes very frustrating. And at a certain point, it really does look like your partner's crazy. And they are crazy in the sense that you're both using your different um, forms of logic. You're approaching the same situation using a very different system of logic. And so from where you're standing, your partner does look crazy. So hopefully you can use the information in this video to help you find a more skillful, useful, helpful way to engage in those areas of difference and, and work through, through those in a more effective way. So according to theory, and I don't necessarily agree with this as a couples therapist, but according to the pure theory around the Myers-Briggs is that it's ideal to marry someone who is your opposite. So um, we have the extrovert should marry introverts, the sensing type should marry you know, intuitive types, thinking should marry feeling, and the um, perceiving should marry judging. So. That's in the theory. I can tell you as a couples therapist that once you have three or four of these areas difference, um, and maybe opposites do attract, but once you have more than three or four areas of difference, there can, you can really get into some serious gridlock because there's not a lot of areas that actually, um, uh, there, there are a lot of areas where you can have conflict and the other person can look really crazy and insane and unreasonable from where you're sitting. So let's start um, with the extrovert versus introvert. So actually most of the couples I work with in my practice are an extrovert versus an introvert couple. I've worked with a fair number of introvert introvert couples and, a, and a not a lot of extrovert extrovert couples. I, and I'm not sure why that is. I've never read any research on it. I don't know if they talk too much and they don't marry each other. I have no idea. But the extrovert introvert differences um, are ones we kind of commonly talk about in society in terms of you know, we always, there's a stereotype of the one partner who wants to stay till the end of the party and the other one who wants to leave or the one who likes to be out every night and the one who wants to stay home. And I think the most important thing uh, between those two differences with a couple is realizing that each of you recharge your batteries differently. And so if you're an extrovert looking at your, uh, the extroverts do tend to get more irritated with the introverts, um, to remember that the Introvert does need time to recharge their batteries in a totally different way than work than what works for an ext extrovert. So, and, and to make sure that each person, and the introvert has to realize that the extrovert does need some of that social time for them to recharge. So figuring out how to allow space for each to work uh, in their own way. And the other thing to really remember too is that extroverts, they talk a lot, especially if you have a very uh, partner who is very introverted in terms of how they process. So sometimes extroverts really take up too much airspace, and especially if they are extroverted and perceiving types where they like to talk through lots of different possibilities, you can wear out your partner. And so being mindful of that, because there are, you know, if you're taking up to way too much airspace or talking through way too many possibilities, you could be overwhelming your partner. And it may seem like they don't really care or it's often how it feels like to the extrovert, but you know, if you've got an introverted judging type who likes to consider one or two options and you are just extroverted, you know, putting out option after option after option, you are wearing down your partner. They can't track all of that sometimes, especially if they're intuitive on top of it all. So to be mindful of those two differences. So sensing versus intuition is actually another area where I think couples get into a lot of conflict. And often this is one that they don't realize, they don't see it. Like extroversion, introversion, it's easier to see. The sensing versus intuitive type is a much more subtle difference where you can really drive each other crazy because you can't quite label it. So the sensing types are very good with details and they like detail and they need detail. Where the intuitive type, they need that big picture structure um, to even track of one or two details. And so when sensing types talk to intuitive types, they often overwhelm them with way too much detail and not enough scaffolding or big picture. So if you notice that your partner seems to not be able to follow you and you tend to be someone who is a sensing type who gives lots and lots of details, you may want to step back and say, can I give my partner a 
big, you know, uh, the big picture, a scaffolding, something to organize and put all these different details into it. The sensing type doesn't need to organize them. They can track them all, but the intuitive type really can't. And so you have to, um, and there may be certain areas like perhaps in you, where you, in the, how, whatever uh, career you have or job you have, you might be able to go and track a lot more details than your partner can follow. So to also be mindful, all of us in our areas of expertise, we can track a lot more details than someone who doesn't have that expertise. And this gets really magnified when you've got a sensing versus intuitive type. And then with intuitive types, if you're trying to communicate to a sensing type, you have to realize that just because you gave the big part, the big picture, you know, and if you haven't given enough details, oftentimes your partner still doesn't understand what you want. They really don't get it. And you do have to give all those details that you think are unnecessary. So you need to track and watch your partner. Notice if there's, if there's a difference there, how much scaffolding does the intuitive type need? How much um, detail does the sensing need for the two of you to really understand each other? And another difference you'll see there is that the intuitive types love to explore those bigger picture possibilities where the sensing types may not be very interested in some of that. So the next difference is thinking versus feeling. And so this is one we do talk a lot about. I mean, this is one where there's a gender difference. So men tend to be thinkers, women tend to be feelers. There's about a 60, 70% of men are thinkers, 60 to 70% of women are feelers. So uh, many couples then are actually partnered where you'll see the thinking male and the feeling female. If you have that, um, if you're in a heterosexual relationship and you have that, uh, you'll have many of the stereotype things we talk about where women are always, you know, feet, talking about their feelings, overly emotional, and the men are more logical. And so this really becomes important when you're making decisions. And so you want to, when, especially as a couple, you need to make a decision to consider and sometimes even talk about explicitly, is this a, a decision where thinking and logic should rule or is this one where emotions are more important? So a common place where I see um, couples really struggle is the thinker often doesn't think that the feelings are important uh, or, or should be weighted as heavily as the feeler wants to. And as I've said in other videos, when it comes to the relationship and, and being in a relationship, the feeling part typically needs to be weighted a bit more heavily than what's logical. It shouldn't be illogical, I'm not saying no logic, but considering how everyone feels in a relationship, couple, family, relationships um, is central. These relationships have to be emotionally safe for people. And so that has to be weighted heavily. And often what happens is the thinker is like, well, that shouldn't make you feel insecure or that shouldn't make you feel anxious. So stop feeling anxious, stop feeling insecure. Well, that doesn't actually work or help. It's like telling someone to calm down. It's like, I know we've all done it and it is like the least useful thing we could possibly do. So um, to be aware of this and uh, when couples are making communicating with each other and making decisions. So, and then when that's reversed, um, where for, if you have a heterosexual couple and um, the male is the female and the female is the thinker, th this adds for some interesting dynamics um, because both of them have all these qualities that most people complain that a man or a woman doesn't have. Um, but it also can make the woman look a lot colder or the man to look wimpier um, when they get into bad fights is, is kind of where they go. And so to be very aware of that is a very cultural norm. This is not biological, it's much more cultural because there are different cultures that have different uh, ratios. Um, to be, and to be mindful of, yes, you have a feeling male partner and there's a lot of wonderful things that come with that. They're often more in tune with your own, with your emotions. They can, you know, tend to be more romantic and um, to be able to read your emotions where, uh, and so that's wonderful. But they also, you know, are going to be more in tune to how you treat them and how their emotions um, yeah, and how they feel in the relationship, and they'll be more sensitive to some of that stuff. And vice versa, a woman who comes, who's a thinker, thinking type, she often um, will say things in, in a more direct way, 
than a, a woman who's a feeler. And so she's not a stereotypical woman in that sense. They often don't fit in well with other um, females and, and female, all female groups because they're so direct in their communication and they're not willing to say things that might hurt someone's feelings. So they're just, you know, uh, different than the stereotypical or the average um, person. So to just be mindful and to make space for that. And there's a lot of good that really comes from um, having your partner not be the stereotypical, uh, you know, gender stereotype. Um, but on the other hand, it, it, when you're angry or where there's a difference, um, it creates a lot of conflict. So, and then finally, the other, the last area, which creates a lot of conflict for couples. And again, this is one that often couples, there's not a label for it, or it's not easily identifiable, is the judging versus perceiving. So, um, when, when one person is the judging type in a relationship, they, they, in their worst moments, they are more judgmental. They do jump to uh, conclusions. They are very decisive. Um, where the perceiving type, um, they like to explore possibilities, look at things from multiple perspectives, reconsider um, decisions that they've made, but they're constantly looking at, for new possibilities. And so uh, the judging type, um, they like to have decisions made and they get anxious until the decision gets made. Unfortunately, the perceiving type is the exact opposite. They love to explore all the options and then they feel anxious once the decision gets made. They feel kind of trapped in to one of the many, usually decent possibilities they had in their life. So this is a place where there's lots of conflict in couples because a judging type will often see a couple of behaviors in the other, in their partner and judge them to be good or bad. Um, and they'll often get very frustrated with the perceiving type who doesn't like to be pinned down, who doesn't like to um, make plans and stick to a rigid schedule. You can imagine when this couple goes on a vacation or holiday, you know, one likes to have it all planned out. The other one doesn't want anything on their schedule. They just want to go, you know, as the spirit moves them. Uh, you know, so this is a place where lots of couples can have conflict when it comes time to make any decision together as a couple. Uh, if there's a judging and perceiving type, they often, you know, kind of get into a gridlock situation um, because one of them, you know, thinks they have enough information to make a decision and they think their partner should be making a decision too. While the perceiving type still wants to keep doing more research, looking at more options, considering more possibilities and driving their partner insane. So understanding that both of these um, functions are important and vital, and uh, but in different contexts, one is more useful than the other. So if we're just trying to order dinner, dinner, let's do some judging. You know, let's just make a decision and move on with the night. Where um, at least at a certain point, or if you're buying a house, you probably do need to slow down. Let's do some research about the neighborhood, research the various options, and take more time to make those bigger decisions. So together and knowing when, you know, each style should lead in a given context can really strengthen a couple. Um, but if you don't know what you're dealing with, it can be quite frustrating. So hopefully you found um, this useful. Hopefully you can use it to improve your, um, your relationship, hopefully reduce a little bit of conflict and increase some understanding.